most people who are here go, why would I want to be 180? There's diapers and tubes and you don't remember your name and you're entirely dependent on other people and you feel your brain going away and man, this is not what aging was ever like throughout all of history. It's unnatural, it's not necessary, it's not what's happening for people who do even a few of the things here. Welcome back everyone to the School of Greatness podcast. We got my man, Dave Asprey, in the house. My man, good to see you. You've got a new book, Superhuman, The Bulletproof Plan to Age Backward and Maybe Even Live Forever. So we're gonna talk about how we're gonna live forever today, but we were talking about a little bit before we started about hormones. Yep. And I met with a nutritionist about six to seven months ago because I felt like I've been working really hard as an athlete eating well, training hard, but I haven't been able to get that, the feeling, the, <laughs> the final little belly fat gone. Yeah. And I was like, why is this happening? You know, I'm a fit guy, I work yeah. out, I get up early, I do the right things. So why am I not at the fitness level that I truly want to be at? It, and, I, and I met with this nutritionist yeah, yeah. and this I did thing? all the blood work and all the, oh, you know, cool. I did all the sampling yeah. and he was like, it doesn't matter how well you eat, how hard you work out, two a days, um, it comes down to sleep and hormones. He was like, your hormones, you have too much estrogen and you're not able to burn that extra fat yeah. with that amount of estrogen and you're not mm -hmm. producing enough testosterone. And he said the human body is not designed to be running as hard as you're running it at this level of mm -hmm. life, right? It's designed to be sitting by a tree and laying in the sun for 30 to 60 minutes a day. and you know, getting lots of sleep, yeah. not running your mind to the extreme amounts of pressures and stresses that the human body does today. And he said, here are a lot of things we can do, but truly it's gonna be hormones that you'd have to master first. Nice. So I like this guy already. So tell me about hormones and what you've learned and do hormones affect uh, how long you live as well as your health, or does it affect everything, or does it just affect some things? Hormones affect everything. There's a whole chapter in Superhuman on using hormones for anti-aging. There's a lot of fear around testosterone replacement, mostly because in the 70s, you know, the, the roid rage, they're using non-bioidentical testosterone. So these yeah. are pharmaceuticals that mess up your liver and seriously spike your testosterone way beyond normal levels. When I was 26, I did what you did. And this was 20 years ago. No one wow. did that sort of stuff. It was even hard to find a doctor who could order labs. Yeah. And it turns out I had more estrogen than my mom. You were, wow. At you were, 26. Were you also like, what, Three, 80 300, pounds overweight? 300 pounds. Yeah, it was about 80 pounds overweight then. Yeah. Wow. And uh, more estrogen than your mom. And less testosterone than my mom. <laughs> and you were how old? My mom's kind of buff. Okay. <laughs> how old were you? I was 26. Wow. And so my, my health was, was a complete shit show. I, I mean, I, I try to talk about this and say, guys, if I can do the things that I've done, it's going to be a lot easier for you because you did not start out. I, I still have like massive stretch marks. Mm -hmm. And it turns out I went on testosterone and... At 26. At 26. And it was one of that and thyroid hormone because my thyroid was completely messed up. I'm hoping your, your nutritionist uh, looked at your thyroid levels. Yeah. Because they start to decline a little bit around 40. And even a tiny decrease in thyroid, this is the thermostat for your body. If it goes down a little bit, like, oh, that's normal for your age. Who cares for your age? You should have the testosterone levels of a 30-year-old when you're 70 or when you're 170. So if your body doesn't do it, then you say, am I in charge? Or is something that's designed to have children and then die quickly, which is pretty much all life forms. Right. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe you just should take over. So that's what I did. When I was testing the Bulletproof diet, I went off testosterone for a couple of years to see if that was a variable. And I found out if I slept really carefully, I did all sorts of things, I could keep myself at medium levels. But if I want to be medium high, that using supplements works way better. So the three ways you want, you're going to want to look at testosterone, first step is just look at stopping your testosterone from turning into estrogen. And there's herbal compounds and there's pharmaceuticals that can do that. The second thing you'll probably want to do is look at adding testosterone. And you want the bioidentical, the same stuff your body makes. 
There's basically three or four ways you can do it. There's topical, which is a cream or a gel you put in your armpit, or um, I think the technical term is the chode. Chode. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But kind of down there. Yeah. And uh, (laughs) that's, that's actually a great way to go. The problem there is that if you're around kids or anywhere could transfer that could be a problem yeah uh, so you, you want to be careful there the benefit to having especially the cream is that if you had a very tiny amount of the cream and it happened to get on your partner in certain areas it has it's been named scream cream because it has very strong effects on women so uh, like burning or in no. a negative scream or more of like a sexual as in, i've never had that much gotcha. blood in that region of my body before uh, gotcha. and could we please go again right, right, kind right. of gotcha. uh, kind of activity to not be too crass about it sure so it's a kind of a well-known anti-aging trick that um you know obviously you would want to chalk you know let let, let your partner know about yeah. this but it's not enough to do anything physiological just other than like like I really, really, really like how I feel right now. So if you have topical testosterone, that's a side hack. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also can inject it. You do that a couple times a week, and that's really effective. It's just a pain; you got to do it. Or right now, I have pellets uh, in basically my upper butt cheek. I think and, you mentioned this to me last time yeah, I saw you. Have yeah. pellets, so you implanted. Yep, pellets that release slowly is that over what's... four months. So once every four months, you go and they make a super tiny incision, enough for one stitch basically, and then they stick the little pellets in there, no and way. then yeah, they just uh, dissolve. So then you don't have to think about it. You don't have to inject it every yeah. two, two two times a week. You just don't have to think about it. Does it hurt? No, it's <laughs> it's really minor. I, I mean, it, it's weird it's that minor if you, surgery. If you get a massage, like you have a little muscle knot, like, that's not a muscle knot. That's testosterone. Just wow. don't squeeze it real hard because it'll explode. They're like, they're, no, they're like little beads, kind of. They oh. wouldn't explode, but you know, you just don't want to wow. crush them. And how does that work? Is it do? Is it effective? Totally. So my levels should be, if I tested right now, about nine hundred. Which is where I'd want him to be. I wonder so, where I'm at. I don't even sure. I'll have to check the labs. You're probably your 650, but I don't know. You're still pretty muscular. Yeah, I'm how, still how, strong. How, how old know? are you? Uh, 36. 36. So yeah, I mean, you're getting right to that point. Yeah. And there's a, another chapter in here about something called NAD, which which is pronounced as NADS, but we're not talking about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a an anti aging compound, and I'm right. There's there's. You're making me think of this because I just read the whole book, the audio book, yeah. the first time ever. I That's, read the whole thing in a it's studio. It's like five days. It's the yeah. worst thing ever. <laughs> it was a lot. But it, it really makes it stick in your mind. Uh-huh. So there's a thing here. When people hit about 40, especially athletes, they start saying, you don't know, just almost to a T what you said. I'm pushing hard. I wake up. I eat the right stuff. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a fit guy. But there's something not quite right. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, it's declines in NAD. So what I've done is I've done 10 intravenous infusions. We do this at Upgrade Labs, and it's it was pioneered for drug and alcohol addiction, but it's a mitochondrial restoration protocol. Yeah, and And the last time I had you on, everything was about mitochondria in the brain, right? Yeah, that was for Headstrong. Mm -hmm. That book was cool because I didn't expect this, but you know, uh, Homo Deuce and Sapiens, those like real famous books about on the New York Times monthly like science book list, which is sort of the the baller list. (laughs) <laughs> my book was sandwiched between those two books. That's cool. Which I, I never targeted or expected. And it, it, I just got an email. I was like, like That's great. this is the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. But that was just all brain, brain, brain. Superhuman is more, look like now that your brain works, now your, your body works, how do you keep it around for a mm-hmm. while longer? And of course, there's, there's some mitochondria, but there's seven things that make us old. Mitochondria is just one of them. And it turns out it's one that might be an underpinning for many of the other things. Uh, but what are, the, what are the seven things? Seven things are, I call them the, the seven pillars. Okay. And one of them is mitochondrial uh, mutations or, or essentially insufficiency. So this means your cells can't make enough money, or enough money, (laughs) enough energy for you to make enough money. Uh, So what really happens there is I wanted to make enough energy to repair a cell. I couldn't make enough energy with the food you gave me or with the state of the cell. So I didn't repair the cell Mm. and then bad things happen. And then you get old. Yeah. Yeah. And so if if that's one, I want to make sure I don't repeat myself and I'm pulling these from my head. Yep, so mitochondria is the first one. The next one is something that I call cellular straitjackets. And it, it's fascinating that everyone's heard of beta amyloid plaque, because, oh, we have Alzheimer's disease, everyone has amyloid. But what you don't know is amyloid forms throughout your body in all of your proteins, and it's basically cross-linked proteins that are inflexible. And you get more of this as you age, and it turns out there's things you can do 
that are coming online right now that'll break it down, but there's also a lot you can do just to prevent it from forming because it's almost like a cellular level scar tissue. So you've taken mm -hmm. plenty of hits, uh, yeah, you know, as an hits. athlete, right? So you know what scar tissue in an elbow or a knee or a hip or something does. Mm -hmm. Imagine each cell, every time it gets inflamed, it just wants to get a little bit more scar tissue. This is happening. If you're going to live to at least 180 like I am, you might want it to happen a little bit less. Otherwise, I'm going to be walking around pretty yeah. stiff when I'm, when I'm old, and I don't really want that. Okay. <clears throat> so how do and we that, eliminate that? Well, that one, I mean, we can go through in detail on each of these things. Um, that one... It turns out what you eat really matters because if you eat stuff that makes you inflamed or if you have an autoimmune condition or if you have environmental allergies and you don't deal with them, that constant chronic low levels of inflammation, that's what does that. that. Builds up, yeah. yeah, so you're talking 20, 30 years after this stuff starts and all of a sudden just bad stuff is going on in your body and you don't know why and literally the cells can't move the way they're supposed to move. Mm -hmm. And what's going on there is you eat fried stuff on a regular basis, you eat those grains, the whole grains you still think are healthy even though they are shown to cause inflammation in all humans. Sorry, I wish it wasn't that way because I like a croissant like the rest of us. I love croissants. <laughs> but they're just not good for us. Yeah. And some people are more sensitive than others. Yeah. And for me, there's something called the nightshade family. And I wrote about this in the Bulletproof Diet, by the way, I saw it right there. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Yeah, Dr. Um, Gundry. Gundry talks about nitrates, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, that was one of the four categories of plant toxins that might be a problem for you in the Bulletproof Diet. And Dr. Gundry, who's, who's a good friend, focuses on those very heavily. And there's other stuff that comes in plants like heavy metals. It's, it's a major cause of aging. There's a whole chapter on heavy metals. Wow. Um, did you know kale is the number one source of thallium in our diet? Thallium is called the poisoner's poison. So we shouldn't be having kale? No, kale's gross. Have oh you eaten it lately? Oh my I, I, yeah, but they put it with saute with butter and some garlic, you know, it's like... <laughs> you have to torture kale to make so it taste no good. no kale. I don't know that no kale is necessary, but... I thought I, leafy greens was the thing. Leafy greens, some of them, but there's a difference between lettuce and kale, a very big difference. I have a, You know, I have a farm, right? Yeah. I've got sheep and pigs. If I give them raw kale, they spit it out. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. There's a pile of raw kale. They will not yeah, eat it. Yeah, I can put but, it in the compost. The worms will eat it. Right. <laughs> but, wow. Yeah. Interesting. So you're not supposed to be eating kale. Kale is high in oxalic acid, which causes systemic inflammation. Going back really? to that. So very high in it, actually. Kidney stones and gout what? are happening in all kinds of people who eat too much kale, especially raw kale. So I, I, I wrote a post actually a couple of years ago. It's like, hey, cook your kale, dump the water, add some baking soda to precipitate out these microcrystals. Because one of the things that kale does, if you eat a lot of it, those microcrystals start circulating around, they bind with calcium, and they stick in your tissues. Like in women, there's something called uh, vulvodynia, where the crystals form in the labia. And then it's really painful even just to sit down. And what about... Um, cook your kale is all I'm saying. Don't eat it okay. every day. Cook your right? kale. Don't eat raw yeah. kale. What about kale chips now? Uh, you know, I guess it's kind of cooked a little bit, I guess. Yeah, they're cooked, but you don't. You want to like wash the stuff out. It, it's a, it's okay. a really strong toxin that, that the plants use to keep from being right. overeaten. To not be killed. Yeah. Right. They so don't want about, us to kill them. What so about, um, that's different than lectins, but it, it, there's stuff like that that's out there. But here's the thing. Yeah. It's, you don't have to be perfect about it. It's not like a kale's good or kale's bad. If you're doing two kales a day, you're probably going to get kidney stones or other bad stuff wow. over time. I was a raw vegan. I did a lot of kale. It was not good for my joints. It's not good for most people. Um, so that said, wow. can it taste good with bacon? Hell yeah. yeah. Right. So Small amounts, if yeah. you're having a side dish of collard greens and kale, whatever, like just eat it and enjoy it. Yeah. Right. But if you're doing it on purpose to ramp it up, it's actually not going to make you superhuman. It's probably going to increase systemic inflammation, which is going to increase your risk of the four killers I read about in the book, like diabetes and things like that. Kale doesn't cause diabetes, but systemic inflammation does. Mm -hmm. So it's like, stop taking these thousand little cuts that we take in our life, it may just take less. You don't have to be perfect. And if you can find the foods that are triggers for you. So for me, I could eat some kale occasionally. If I eat a lot of it, I really feel it. But the nightshades, they trash me. And I love them. By the the main nightshades are, is that tomatoes? Is that? It's uh, spicy peppers, eggplants. Oh, so good. I, I know, that. cayenne. It's, it's, I grew up in New Mexico. You're not I supposed to eat it. Well, no. You can probably eat it just fine. A third of us, if you have the genes I do, I eat it and I have the knee pain. I've had three knee surgeries before I was 23. I had arthritis since I was 14. It's caused by those. If I don't wow. eat them, I have no pain in my back. If I eat them, it comes back reliably every time. Wow. But if you don't know it, and, and you're saying, well, I, I have this kind of crunchiness and it's always there, 
you have to find out what's causing it because if you allow it to happen, when you are 60 or 70, really, really you're going to hate your life, yeah. right? And if you if you fix it now, your energy level goes up right now and you love your life right now. And when you're old, you won't look or feel old. Right. So it's that important that we figure that out. And so that's kind of the cellular straitjacket. Inflammation causes this cellular level scar tissue to form. And then there's zombie cells. It's one of my favorites. Is this three? Yeah, this is three. Zombie cells. Yeah. Zombie cells are cells that should die, but don't. Ooh. And they sit there and they take up space and resources. They make free radicals, but they don't do their job anymore. So is the best way to kill those off is to fast? Turns out fasting causes autophagy, which is one of the ways to do it. And there's a few drug protocols I write about in here and some other supplements, one called Fisetin that comes from strawberries and seaweed that are shown to remove senescent cells. Mm. And these seven types of aging, these have been studied by a lot of people I've interviewed uh, on my show. And in 20 years of running an anti-aging nonprofit, I've gotten to know the people doing the research. So decades of knowledge has gone into, you know, we finally understand this. You know, uh, David Sinclair, by the way, that's a guy you should have on the show if you haven't. Uh, he is uh, a guy who's just written a, a book that says straight up, I've spent 30 years studying aging at Harvard. And you know what? I feel safe now saying that we can turn the biological clock in ourselves backwards because now we know why we age and what to do about it. Wow. Like straight up, you don't do that as an academic unless you are sure. And we're, we're actually at the point where we know these seven things will do it. Wow. If you have a car, you know that you want to keep your car for a while, you should change the oil, change the tires and, and do the maintenance schedule. But if you only do half the maintenance schedule, the car isn't going to make it. Well, these seven things in superhuman are the seven things that you account for, because mm -hmm. if you don't do all seven of them, you're not maintaining your chassis very well. Yeah. Like you're, you're going to have a problem. Yeah. And so to get rid of these zombie cells, fasting is a big deal as well as some of these other new things that are coming online and what's neat here is i can actually tell you exactly when and what is happening and right now for those most people won't go on the drug cocktail uh, that you can get because it costs about 500 bucks and it's still considered experimental all of my anti-aging friends like oh yeah <laughs> i'm going to do that once every year for, right. for the next while because it's worth 500 dollars, and they feel better and their immune system works better and they're noticing a difference so I'm talking about the stuff that crazy billionaires do, the stuff, why it works, the stuff that you can do that's very affordable, you know, $50 supplement or something, and then the stuff that's free that stops the problem in the first place. Right. So the deal is you don't have to go out and do it, but anything the crazy billionaires are doing, if it costs $10,000 right now, it's, it's going to cost, cost a thousand bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It, you, we, just by raising awareness, you're going to go to your insurance company and be like, hey man, why can't I get this? Because I don't need knee replacement if you give me stem cells in my knees. Right. And I've done, I write about it, I share the whole experience. I did a $120,000 whole body stem cell makeover uh, in Utah. And, yourself? Uh, well, I mean, I had doctors doing it, not me. Right, right, but, right, but yeah. yeah, so I, I wow. went in, three doctors, uh, Dr. Harry Adelson wow. led it, and a neurosurgeon from Johns Hopkins named Marcella. Um, and then uh, Amy Killen did the cosmetic stuff. So I'm unconscious for four hours. They're pulling a half a liter of bone marrow out. What? How do they do that? Uh, they go in through your, your hip, the iliac crest. Oh. I've had that done twice. Once I was awake, actually, I, with no, no uh, anesthesia. Oh, my gosh. They I have a video. bone marrow yeah, out? Yeah, the video, you see them, like, hammering on this thing. And then they go, ear, ear, oh like, right on the bone. In the bone? <laughs> Look at your face. <laughs> gosh, man. It doesn't hurt. Everyone says it hurts. It's just this... It's the weirdest feeling I've ever had. It was intense, but it wasn't pain. It was, it was more like fingernails on a blackboard intense. Ah. <laughs> so I did that. What was I, this? Uh, let's see. I did that about a year ago. No way. And How much did they take bone marrow? A half a liter. I mean, it's a good amount of bone wow. marrow. Wow. So what do they do with that? Well, they take it. They get the stem cells out of it, and then they re-inject them throughout the body. Mm -hmm. So I had stem cells from my fat and my bone marrow. I had them injected every joint in the body knees, hips, every, all along the spine, inside the spine, along the spinal cord with the cannulae, <laughs> into the cerebrospinal what? fluid, into face, hair, oh my gosh. male reproductive organs, uh, pretty much everywhere you can put a stem cell in a human, I did all at the same time. In four hours? Yeah. Did, was that, you had to be in pain for a few days afterwards. At you know, least. the first two days were pretty tough. If I couldn't move that Mostly well. from the spinal stuff where they put it inside the spine. Oh my gosh, man. <laughs> Every joint though. So they're injecting yeah. what, through a needle or through a... Yeah, just a needle. And they use a 3D x-ray machine or ultrasound and they guide the needle to go right <sighs> to get it along this. But you know what? You're asleep. Okay. 
Yeah, you're asleep, <laughs> and you, you wake up, and you sort of look kind like, of like oh, the Terminator. Got a pain. Yeah, uh, it was the first two days were just not happy. Yeah, but you know what? This is the sort of thing I'm very unlikely to have spinal stenosis when I'm 80 because wow. my spine is rejuvenated, and all of the old injuries that, that I've had are just going away or have gone away, mm. and really dramatic stuff. Uh, even my wife, frozen uh, neck since she was nine when she fell out of a like a two-story building. And three days after she got injected, she's like, I can move my head for the first time all the way. Like, wow. this is amazing. So, How much of it is this placebo versus I, I don't really, science, you know? Oh, for stem cells, there's a huge amount of science. I, but I, mean, I wonder how much of it is work. like, okay, it's been injected. Yeah. Now I can feel confident to, you know. I think that she had flexible. other treatments. I mean, she's an ER doctor. Gotcha. You're trained, oh, wow. you know, trained at Karolinska Institute. She's had lots of people work wow. on it. Okay. And uh, she was just not even expecting that. Sort of like, yeah, inject all these spots, whatever. Uh, so for her, it was that. And then they also do the reproductive organs. We've had a couple kids, wow. right? And she's she's fifty, and so both of us had our reproductive organs done, and it, she was just completely floored, like like wow. massive changes. So you could say, okay, Dave, that that's a ridiculous. Thing. You could buy a Tesla for that. Um, here's the deal. Number yeah, one, I, live I, I, yeah. Well, so I'm a guinea pig, so like you know, we we, we worked a deal, and yeah, exactly. And two, um, and I have other friends who've gone through the full treatment. Cause, like I'm really serious about living a long time, but. It shouldn't cost that much. Yeah, like yeah. it will be twelve thousand dollars in a little while. It's coming down yeah. fast, fast, fast. Uh, but the the differences in in how you feel are profound. So if, if that's an example of what a crazy biohacker would do, okay. Let's say you're facing a hip replacement or a joint replacement. Would you go in and spend five thousand dollars instead of getting the replacement if you had a fifty percent chance of not needing a new joint? Amazing. Most people would, especially if their insurance oh, company wow. would do it, because a joint replacement is twenty five grand, and growing your own tissues back is five grand. Like, right. let's do that. Yeah. Right. And so a lot of superhuman. I'm going to talk about that kind of stuff, saying maybe you should know it exists. But there's so many things that are free and cheap yeah. that can re regenerate something. Like, let's talk about knees. I mean, you and I have talked about knees before. But there's something called prolozone that I talk about here. They inject ozone gas. It's a $150 injection wow. into your knee. And it causes cartilage to regrow. And I've seen x-rays before and after wow. of people. And I've seen the difference in my own joints. So it's, it's pretty strong stuff. And have you ever heard of injecting ozone in a joint? No. Most people haven't, but the science has been going back since World War I, a hundred years of science, mm. and it's just unknown. So I interviewed and got to know the pioneers in that space, the people who are, are the top in the field, and I talk about it in the book saying, here's what ozone therapy does to restore mitochondria, the number one of these aging things. Wow. So, so you go through this, and there's kind of the story of what it's like to do these things, but also here's what you can do right now to increase stem cells. By the way, fasting seems to be really effective for a lot right, of things. Right, right. Sleep and fasting are those. And do the trick. Yeah, 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 those are crazy things. But then how do you sleep, right? Like that's that's kind of a, a big deal. So right. do, you, do you track your sleep on, your, on a I, ring I need to get the aura ring. I'm supposed it, to get one soon. Oh, man. Well, it's I'll, amazing, right? Yeah, I'll email Harpreet if you want, but let me... Let me show you a sleep score here that's, here we go. So I slept six hours and 50 minutes. Uh -huh. Two hours and 50 minutes of dreaming sleep. That's way more than a 20 year old gets in eight hours really? of sleep. Oh yeah, and an hour and 19 of deep sleep here. So I gotta track this so I know if yeah. my sleep's working or not. Right, and I can tell you, if you're getting an hour, more than an hour, I do an hour and a half of deep sleep, you're getting more than most people. And over time, as you age, there's a, decline in REM and deep sleep. Those will keep you young. So I sleep like a young person. Wow. And I did that on purpose. I did not used to be good at sleep. I learned how to do it. I've written the, the preeminent blogs on sleep hacking. And you know, when people talk about blue blocking glasses, they're not enough. I started a company called True Dark that does actually patented glasses for sleep that are more than blue blocking. And you wear those right before bed. And I don't get jet lag when I use them. And like all these crazy things because now we know the science that we didn't know 10 years ago. So our ability to sleep like young people mm. has changed and mm. that will reduce your risk of the things that are most likely to kill you as well as make you younger. Better sleep. Yeah. Wow. All right, so we got, we got mitochondria, zombie cells, cellular straight jackets. All right, there's buildup of gunk inside the cells. I call it uh, intracellular junk. Okay. And our cells have these things called lysosomes. And their job is to take broken down parts of the cell or parts of food metabolism and digest them and use them. So it's sort of like a furnace 
that burns waste or burns garbage. So if you went to the dump, there's an incinerator. But what if you put stuff in the incinerator that wouldn't burn? Eventually it gets full and you can't use the incinerator because there's no more space to put stuff in. Mm -hmm. Well, that's happening in your cells right wow. now. So companies are working on enzymes you'll be able to take that will help to remove that. In the meantime, what you do is you put in less stuff in your body that your cells can't break down. So in other words, don't put the hunks of metal under the incinerator because they don't burn, mm -hmm. right? right? So to solve this problem right now, the easiest thing to do is don't eat a lot of sugar because sugar helps to create something called advanced glycation end products or AGE and don't eat burned meat in, or burned vegetables for that matter. Uh, in the Bulletproof Diet, I wrote about the dangers of eating advanced glycation end products and the problem is there was only two studies, <laughs> but we know that they form anytime you eat sugar, the sugar goes into your, if you spike your blood sugar level, it goes in and it browns your tissues the way onions mm. get caramelized. That's advanced glycation end products. You can make that creme brulee or that that's crusty so meat. Uh, it, it's, I don't know why they taste good because they're really bad for you, but yeah, yeah. they taste good. So if you don't just, eat those burnt things. Yeah, just go to the restaurant and say, could you not blacken my steak? Uh -huh. Right. And it's, it's a, you just don't want to eat that blackened, yeah. super burned stuff. And if occasionally have a caramelized, crunchy crust on your steak, great. Make it brown, not black. Yeah. Right? Like You don't have to be perfect. But when you do that, when you eat those things, now we know they go in and they just stick right in the lysosome. And now your cells mm -hmm. can't burn all the other bits of protein. So you end up getting, eventually, zombie cells mm -hmm. because of that. So let's yeah. put less stuff in there that's harmful. So don't spike your blood sugar levels. Don't eat burned food. Right. Okay. Big difference. Okay. Got it. Then there's accumulation of stuff outside the cells, right? And this is another different set of problems. And there, it's amazing that sometimes fasting makes a really big difference fasting for this. Does everything, huh? It does, but you can also bind toxins by taking things that bind toxins. You have these heavy metals that are inside the cells and outside the cells. As any animal ages, things that bioaccumulate get worse and worse. So if, I like to go fishing. Uh, and so I'll go up to Alaska with friends once a year. And if you catch a hundred pound halibut, you throw it back. Mm. And the reason you do that is this fish is probably a hundred years old and it, it's probably going to lay a lot of eggs, which is good. You uh. should, you should let them reproduce. But even if you wanted to eat it, that fish has a hundred years of eating other fish oh, wow. and it is full of mercury and nickel and cadmium and all the things that will mess up your cellular metabolism, give you gray hair. There's a whole chapter here on like gray hair and hair loss wow. and stuff like that and wrinkles and skin. But the, the real issue here is you and me are the same way. So if you eat food, you need to eat clean food and you want to actually go through and remove the toxins as you go. Otherwise, yeah. when you're 100 years old, you have 100 years of toxin buildup of these things that don't naturally leave the body. So in superhuman, I'm like, I right, take this fiber supplement, <laughs> take activated charcoal, yeah. and do these things that allow the body to just naturally eliminate these things. Otherwise, they will go in and they'll be in your liver, they'll be in your brain, they'll be in your skeleton, and they'll be in your nervous system, and over time, all of the diseases of aging are associated with metal buildup in those things. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. what an example of a toxin that could be outside of cells. One of the other seven pillars of aging is the telomerase. Number five? Yeah, I think this is number five. Uh, the yeah. telomerase, the ones well, we, that... We had, we, had to we had toxins inside the cells and outside the cells, like the buildups. So you have intracellular, you have extracellular is number five. Okay. Extracellular? Extra, E-X-T-R-A, extra. extracellular. So inside and outside the cells. Yeah. And then... Let's see, number six would be telomerase. And this is something- the ends of the, the gene, or the ends of the DNA? What is it? The... They're different than the ends of the DNA. It, it's essentially, imagine it like a wick. If you have a cell, every time it divides, you take, you, you subtract one unit from the wick, and that's called the Hayflick limit. Uh -huh. So it's normally about 37. So if you have normal telomerase, you can copy a cell 37 times, and then it won't, it won't do anything. Mm. And at that point, you get zombie cells. So- gotcha what you want to do then is figure out a way, how do I add more pieces onto that wick? Mm -hmm. The only problem is if you add too many pieces onto it, it increases your cancer risk. But what if you could reduce the number of things? So really, regeneration, anytime you increase growth of your cells like a young person, you increase cancer risk. So mm. it turns out in here, I'm like, well, there's four things that are going to kill you if you're average. And cancer, cardiovascular disease, 
Alzheimer's and diabetes. Really? 80% of people listening to the show, one of those is going to get you. Really? And usually diabetes is a, a precedent to the other three. So let's assume we're not average because you can read the book and you can do the things and you and I aren't average because, well, we have the ability to order the food that we want. Mm -hmm. Okay, just that alone is right. a huge advantage. There's a lot of people who actually, they don't, yeah. they're in a food desert. They yeah. grains I, all day or whatever. Yeah, I can go to 7-Eleven or I can go to the dollar store. Like, which right. one? It, there's no food there. Uh, not yet. We'll get some good collagen bars yeah. into Whole Foods or into Whole Foods into 7-Eleven one of these days. But uh, what's going on with the telomeres is now... There are herbal compounds that are shown to increase the length really? of telomeres, but they cost a couple grand a month. Oh man, that's a lot. Well, it's, it's insane, but there's a Russian peptide, which is a small group of amino acids that's injectable, that's been studied since 2003. Hmm. Peptides are the biggest thing right now. Oh yeah, I've been using when peptides for years. Peptides, yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Oral or injectable? Injectable. Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, let's talk about that. There's a is chapter. Oral better or what? Is it? Uh, depends on what they are, but injectable is good. There's a whole chapter uh, on SARMs and peptides in here oh, as well. Okay. Because and this is the cutting edge stuff. I love that the nutritionist is doing that yeah. because licensed nutritionists and doctors, it's a gray zone for them. Mm -hmm. And they should be completely free to, to yeah. help people use them. But because they're not pharmaceuticals, they're not a drug. Yeah, yeah, they're not a drug, but it's injectable. So there's there's like weird yeah. regulatory zones. He was saying this is like what every doctor is talking about on mm -hmm. all the conferences yeah. and all the research yeah. is like now coming out as, you know, I've healthy on, and natural and fine. I've been on it for 10 years. Wow. Right. And it's crazy what happens because this one in 2003, of course, I'm an anti-aging guy. So, you know, you, you hear about it. You say, all right, I'll try it. And you inject it for 10 days once every six months. And it dramatically lengthens telomeres. So you can do that, and it costs 50 bucks. Right? So you're thinking, all right, I want to live a lot longer. i got seven pillars of aging, telomeres matter. So yep. I'm going to use this peptide. And one of the reasons I wrote Superhuman was, is that there's no one who's really going to market that. Th those are non-patentable, yeah. yeah. but there's something that all of us need to know about because I want to live in a world full of people who are older and full of energy mm -hmm. and, and full of wisdom. Because when I was 26, the reason I know all this stuff I magically made my way to an anti-aging nonprofit group, and I was learning from people two times and almost wow. three times my age. Mm. Uh, one of my really good friends, Mike, there was in his mid-80s, and he's on our board of directors. And the first night I meet him, we're out till 11.30 at night talking about all this stuff. I'm like, this guy has as much energy as I do, and he's like way older than I am. Like, how did he do this? And you just realize it's possible, it's just unusual. Mm. So if it can be done, how do you do it? And so I feel that if when we have a world full of people who have the wisdom of having experienced things, enough energy and enough desire to give back, yeah. it, it saves the rest of us a lot of time and energy right. to have that the, the village elder actually not right. not have Alzheimer's disease and not be in a hospital. Yeah. Right. That's powerful. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's a big part of my mission. And getting this a fifty dollar thing that makes your telomeres longer. That's a pretty good that's pretty, ROI. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. It's already out there, or is that something you're? It's called be... it's called epitalon. It's here. It's not something I make. I'm, I'm not selling that, so I'm just telling you about epitalon? it. Epitalon. Epitalon. E P I T A L O N. And I forget which chapter it's in, but okay. uh, I describe it. And if you ask your right. nutritionist, they'll probably know about it. Okay, cool. And and there's things that speed healing. Something called BPC one five seven. You've probably tried mm -hmm. that once. One of the injectable ones. Uh, it works. And there's uh, other ones, something called TB500. And you go into this and you're saying, wait, but all of these are under $100 and all of them have really strong effects. So if you're dealing with something like, oh, I have an injury or oh, this hurts or I'm looking at this aspect of aging and I don't right. want to deal with that or my brain isn't working. My brain wasn't working. I had arthritis. I was fat. I was a high risk of stroke and heart attack. I had pretty much the diseases of aging before I was 30. And it sucked. And like, I'm not going back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now you've got me asking myself, what is number seven? I know what number seven is here um, to make sure my memory still works. Uh, number seven is uh, loss of tissue. Okay. And as we get old, you imagine that real thin, mm -hmm. uh, real thin skin. Yeah. So I actually talk about the rate of collagen loss mm. and then what you can do about that. And if you are going to live for 100, 150 years, it, it's almost like having an investment in a bank account that compounds. So if you're saying, oh, I'm just going to take aging the way it normally comes, 
you're going to have really thin skin when you're old. Or right. you could. Wow. You it's can, got a loss of collagen, huh? Yeah, it's not just collagen, but in that case, it's an example of collagen. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. It's fat, it's collagen, it's yeah. whatever, yeah. And there are a combination of exposure to light. There's things like red light therapy or just getting some sunshine. Not too much sunshine, but not no sunshine either. Yeah. 20 and, minutes a day or something. Yeah. yeah. And, and a, lot of the, a lot of times we just naturally say, kale's good or kale's bad. Kale's way more bad than good, but I'm not going to say kale's bad. Right. Right? And I'm going to say the right amount. Eat kale a couple of times a week. Fine. Right? And it's the same thing with sun. It's not bad, but getting a sunburn is bad, and getting right. none is bad. So it's like yeah, the correct sun dosage. Sun all day can cause cancer. Yeah, right, and it skin just, disease. Yeah, right, it, all sorts of, of you know aging, photo aging. Mm -hmm. However, if you get some sunlight, including UVB without sunscreen, it actually increases skin thickness. And if you're eating collagen at the same time, so you have the building blocks for skin. Wow. I actually cite the studies in the book that said, okay, you can change the rate of tissue decline, and you you go through here and you say, all right. What's causing this loss of tissues? Well, stem cell exhaustion. So if your stem cells run out, as they do over time, and they become less effective, you get something called sarcopenia, muscle loss. So eating the right amount of protein, and by the way, it's less protein than everyone thinks. Most people eating so much protein, it's increasing cancer risk. You don't, yeah, there's no one who's protein deficient in America, it, right? No. And even it's not people, like you need so much all no. the time. I was a raw vegan for a long time that, that made me really unhealthy, like it does almost everyone. And <laughs> sorry, it's guys. True. It's I, true. I mean, you and I both know yeah, friends so. who really went in on it, like I did. And, and eventually, you're like, man, I'm actually not well. Yeah. And then you recover. I just did it. I did that in like 2003, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I just remember the hellish feeling. Rick Rubin was just yeah. uh, on my show talk. He's like, I was 100 plus pounds fat for 17 years because of the vegan nonsense. Like, wow. he, was, <laughs> he was pretty fiery about it. Wow. But it, it so that there is a big backlash coming. But here's the here's the thing: if you're eating industrial meat, which is what 99% of people are eating, it's also making you old and fat and giving you cancer. Mm -hmm. So the only answer is you eat grass-fed meat, and you only need a couple ounces of it. You don't need a whole right? lot, yeah. Yeah, and so the protein recommendations in here are um, defined based on body weight and all that, but they're much lower than most people think. And if you want to live a long time, you don't eat a lot of protein. So what do you eat instead? You eat vegetables and you eat the right kinds of fat. Mm -hmm. And that's just critically important. If you do that and then you do the things that manipulate a hormone uh, called, actually it's a signaling compound, not a hormone, called mTOR. It's called mammalian target of rampamycin. And I wrote about this in the Bulletproof Diet and in the context of aging. mTOR makes you build muscles. However, if it's chronic elevated, it makes you grow cancer cells. Mm. So you're saying, how do I get muscles you want low mTOR, except when you have high mTOR. So what you do, there's three ways to suppress mTOR. And you want to, like, it's like a spring. You push it down, push it down, and then you like go and go spoing, and then you put on muscle like a madman, sure. and then you suppress, suppress. So get this, fasting suppresses it. Mm -hmm. Exercise, like weightlifting, suppresses mTOR, and coffee suppresses mTOR. Really? So what would happen if you didn't eat breakfast, so now you fasted when you were asleep for eight hours, you wait till noon, you have your coffee, so now you're fasted, now you've had coffee, and then you lift heavy things. Your mTOR is fully suppressed, and then after that, eat your protein, eat some steak, even have some carbs if you want, just don't eat your sugar bombs. Right. And what's gonna happen is, you just got a much higher ROI on your exercise mm. because you did the things in the right order. And after that, by not eating too much protein, you keep your mTOR low. So yeah. you age less, but you still have the muscles you want sure. in less time. Because I'm super lazy. I, I, I don't want to wake up early and exercise twice a day like you do. That sounds right. like an enormous amount That's of work. a lot of work. I, I want to play ping pong with my son. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> That's more fun, right? Yeah. Uh, so I was like, how do we get an ROI on exercise? Everything in superhuman is through the lens of ROI. Because, I mean, you've, you've seen Upgrade Labs. Mm -hmm. I have this at home. I have a million dollar lab. I could spend eight hours a day on rejuvenating technologies and get nothing done. Right. So then the question is, <laughs> what takes the least amount of time and energy? And it's all about energy even more than time. And what gives you the highest returns? So I'm like, how much energy do I have right now? How much time do I have right now? What goal do I want? And then what do I do? And sometimes it's three minutes of cryotherapy and that's all I'm gonna do, Yeah. right? And other times it's much more complex. So everything in superhuman is through that lens of how much energy and time do you have to invest in this stuff and what did you wanna get out of it? Because right, right. frankly, most people don't need a whole body stem cell makeover unless 
you're either at this point pretty wealthy and plan to live a very long time. Uh -huh. But if you're in a lot of pain and you've been in a car accident and you've had arthritis and things aren't working, maybe you want to do it in just one joint. Right. Or, you know, like there's, there's you don't areas. Do all of it, but there's, yeah. the, you're showing what all the things you can do. So this is meant to be the, the, the way to understand what's That's available. Great. Have you ever done a colonic? Uh, I just did one right before I came in. <laughs> <laughs> you're clean. <laughs> I have done a colonic. Well, what are your thoughts on colonics? Are they helpful in they, eliminating they, toxins, or do they help the cells in any way? They, Will they support this? They or? can be if they're done right. The, the first time I did one, I just had really bad gut problems when I had toxic mold exposure, and I was, you know, this is in the 90s sometime. Um, so I was much heavier and just not, brain not working the way it is now. Uh, and there was a lady in Silicon Valley. It was like a super sketchy setup, and uh, you know, you go to this apartment, and, and it was like, ugh. And I decided that really not much good is coming out of this. Uh, but then again, I had chronic gut inflammation from what I was eating. Yeah. So I wasn't going to heal anyway because I was eating the wrong foods. And um, since then, I had a friend say, Dave, you should go see this guy called the Colon Whisperer. No way. He's actually here in Beverly Hills. Shut up. And yeah, Donna Gates actually told me about him. Donna Gates wrote the, the Body Ecology Diet, which is basically where the GAPS diet came from. So she's like a luminary in the field uh, and from the, the previous generation of, of health influencers. Uh -huh. And so, Colin Whisper, <laughs> this guy, he's, I think he was 90 and he's probably no still operating. He had walked from the Southern point of South America all the way to the U S like in, in the 1930s or something. Gosh. Like it, it took him almost a year to walk up here to, to do it. And he has this place in Beverly Hills and he does all the Victoria's secret models. Shut up. I'm not he's kidding. 90? You are the most fascinating guy I've talked to in a long time. Wow. And okay. he, uh, you know, he's putting tubes and he's, there's a microscope and he's like, look, you could see this stuff coming out. But he'd been doing this for 50 years. Yeah. And he'd, you know, pulse the pressure and push here and push there. And I tell you, you come out of there, it wasn't uncomfortable at all. But you come out of there like, I am super lean. Like, like you could really? see my abs. So, it, so there's inflammation stuff. And so if you get a colonic every day or probably even every week, it's going to disrupt your gut bacteria, your bowel flora. Yeah. It's not going to be a good thing. And I've in here I write about the number of bacteria in my gut. I quadrupled the number of gut bacteria, which is a really important you want bacteria in your gut. You want them. Yeah. And it's a number of species. So I went from 48 species to 196 species. Colonics are going to probably take you in the wrong direction there. But if you're sick or you have toxins, you want to get rid of that I, stuff. it's probably worth it. So I, I made something called Inner Fuel. It's a bulletproof prebiotic. I put oh. it in my bulletproof coffee now. And I, I quantified using the Viome test. Uh, it's like a $200 test that tells you the number of species and type of species and what they're doing in your gut. So I'm, I was at 48. So I can't get enough vegetables when I travel. So then I developed these three plant-based resins, basically, like it's tree sap that gut bacteria love. And you put that in the coffee, you can't taste it. And I drink it and now I'm at 196 species. It turns out as you age, there's a predictable decline in your gut bacteria. Just by looking at your poop, you can actually tell wow. within four years how old someone is. <laughs> so what if you had a young person's gut bacteria? Right. You can do that, right? So that's all hackable. We just didn't know what to do. No one knew what direction to go mm -hmm. in. But now Viome has data on 100,000 right. people's gut bacteria, right? right? And we, all, we know there's something called acromancia that gets grown from fasting. Right? So you need to occasionally not eat, and that'll recycle the lining of your gut more effectively. So you could look at this and go, there's just too much here. My, my head's going to explode. But here's the deal. At the end of every chapter, there's a set of bullet points. that says, just do these things. You don't have to know all the whys, but most people want to know why. So you're going to forget all the whys, but the bullet points are organized. Mm. So you can say, all right, consider doing this. Another thing, you're worried about cancer, let's say. So maybe you're doing the telomerase lengthening thing. Well, natural killer cells are the way you stop cancer. So right now, everyone listening to this interview, you have cancer cells in your body. They, they happen every single day and your immune system kills them. That's right. just how, how it works. Well, natural killer cells, okay, I went for the heavy duty hack. <laughs> Pull my blood out, I think it was 19 vials of blood. Wow. And they cultured it for a while, grew my natural killer cells, and we injected 2 billion of my own natural killer cells back to reset wow. my immune system to be 20 years younger. Now, 
Wow. That's something that is, you have to fly out of the country to do it. It is pretty far <laughs> out there. However, it really made a difference. Really? Crazy difference, Where'd actually. Uh, let's see, for that one, that would have been just Tijuana. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you actually do all the blood draws and stuff in the US, and then you fly out. And that's, they can do five people a month with the amount of, of growing of these cells. It, wow. It's a pretty unusual thing. But the reason I did that is, okay, what happens when you get your natural killer cells up? Well, here's what happened to me. For the first 10 days after I had that treatment, I peed 10 times a day and my bladder was always full and I wasn't drinking any more water than normal. I couldn't understand it. Huh. I lost 3% body fat in those 10 days. No way. When fats metabolize, I have the, the data, I have a machine, a $26,000 machine that measures body fat from, from Upgrade Labs. It's the one sure, we use sure, on, sure. on our clients. When so you I, stand on, you'll yeah, hold Yeah, exactly. So I get to go in and, and, and do that. So I'm like, no, I have the data. It was, wow. it was just linear. Ding, ding, ding. And you know, I had to buy smaller pants. You know, I went from basically 13 to 10% body fat. And... This was amazing, but what was going on is I had all these immune cells floating around going, can I get rid of toxins? Can I get rid of old cells? Can I get rid of senescent cells? And when fat is metabolized, just like a camel's humps, fat turns into water. So I was literally turning my fat into water. It, wow. it was unbelievable. And this was because I weighed 300 pounds because I had so much systemic inflammation. Some of those compounds were there. A long time, That's yeah. nuts. So you're saying, all right, I'm not going to do this crazy thing because I don't like needles and because it's expensive and because <laughs> right. it's inconvenient and you know maybe I don't want to live to 180. So I found a study because I, I always find the weird studies. It turns out that going for a walk in an evergreen forest, that smelling the terpenes, the oils from the trees, raises your natural killer count by 20%. So you can buy a type of essential oil called Hiroki spruce oil that is shown to raise your natural killer cells, it'll cost you like 20 bucks. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> There's always a way to do the same thing. The free way is go for a walk in a forest. The cheap way is get some of the essential oil and occasionally pour some on your pillow. You don't have to be right, perfect right. with it. Yeah, yeah. Just expose yourself. You put uh -huh. behind your ear, whatever makes you happy. You mix it in your cologne. I, I don't even wear cologne, it's bad for you. At least most of it is. Right. Make it organic if you're gonna do it. Uh, and then, um, the real expensive thing is I'm on an aggressive anti-aging regimen or I have cancer or an immune issue, I'm going to go for cultured natural killer cells. But it's, it's, a, it's a thing. I just want to try the, the, the gnarliest one so I can tell you the story right. of it and then explain the science and then tell you how to get the cheapest possible thing that's going to move the needle for you. Yeah. I love all this stuff, man. I got to start applying it more and go to uh, upgrade labs more. And let's, uh, let, let's hack um, you, man. That'll I be know. fun. That's what I want to do. For the person listening who is overwhelmed, what would you say um, are five to ten things they could do tomorrow all right. and consistently to just live a better life? Let's talk. Like that's going to help their yeah. health. And it's with with help aging sleep, and everything. It's just everything. Like okay. Overall, I'm going to feel better. I'm going to look better. I'm going to have less pain. More oh, that's energy. easy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Number one, yeah. this is going to be very expensive. Stop eating for a day. Okay. <laughs> a whole 24 hour fast. 24 hour fast. And if, when I was fat and you told me to do that, I, it would actually made me angry. Yeah. So I'm like, I have to eat every six hours. Otherwise my body would go in starvation mode. And besides, if I don't eat every six hours, I want to kill people. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had an unstable blood sugar level and uh, you know, really bad metabolism. <laughs> So if you're one of those people, do it on a Saturday and just warn your family right. and, and just suck it up. And if you're like, I can't do it, if you have only fat and no, you can have coffee, you can have tea, no sweeteners, any of that kind of stuff. If you put a bulletproof coffee, just brain octane, no collagen, brain octane and butter. And ghee, yeah. Yeah, ghee or butter, just a very small amount um, of butter, but a teaspoon of brain octane, that'll turn off hunger for most people fasting. So it actually becomes very effortless. So can you do that while you, as a 24 hour fast? Mm -hmm. You can do that Coffee's, a couple times. One yeah. or two is okay. Coffee's great actually. During a fast? Yeah. It's not gonna mess up uh, the fasting It process. improves it. Okay. In fact, the amount of caffeine in two cups, two small cups of coffee, in other words, most of us drink one medium, yeah. which is two smalls, uh, is shown in a study from UC San Diego to increase, to double ketone production, to increase ketones. Ketones make you full. Mm. So normally, if you don't have your coffee in the morning, you're going to be really full. You drink your coffee, and you're less hungry from the coffee. And that's pretty cool. Now we know why it's a hunger suppressant. Mm. You put the brain octane in there, it bumps your ketones up even more. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, yeah, I guess it's lunchtime. I don't need I, to eat. I could eat. Maybe I'll have a little bit more of this coffee, and I'm good to go. And then at nighttime, you might be a little hungry. You go to sleep anyway. You wake up the next morning. 
fasting, doing that once a week or even once every two weeks will make you live longer, feel better, turn your brain on. Everything shifts in your metabolism. Really? And if that's too much, just try skipping breakfast and having a late lunch. Right? So just learn and learn to teach your body that if you can go without food for a brief period of time, you'll be better that's off. That's true. If you go, if yeah. you have like a dinner at six yeah. and then you finish by seven and you just say, I'm going to wait till dinner the next day. Yeah. Right. You try to go to bed early. The, have there's, in the there's your 24 hour fast. It's that's not it. that big of a deal. It's not that hard. Yeah. yeah. I and might do that today. I had dinner at five yesterday. Yeah. Four, five, and I'll probably just wait till five today. No. I had a cup of coffee, water. Yeah. Water okay? Oh, water's great. Yeah. Now, one warning. Okay. If you just got off an airplane, if you had a heavy workout, if you had a huge fight I'm with your it. spouse, or if you're um, ovulating uh, or about to menstruate, those are probably not the best days to fast because you have already enough demands on your body, right? You just finished a marathon, <laughs> like, yeah. it's okay. Go eat. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, so do it at a time when you're not exceptionally stressed biologically or emotionally or physically. Uh, doing that will change everything. It doesn't cost you anything. It requires a minor amount of willpower. Yeah. The little hack with Bulletproof Coffee really works okay. and you still get all the benefits of fasting. I've interviewed top experts to ask them that question specifically because my understanding of it is that a little bit of fat during a fast won't activate insulin, won't do any really? bad things. Yeah. So it's okay. Gotcha. There's pretty good science behind it. And you're like, I went really deep on that. Gotcha. Okay. Right. So step one, don't eat. Step two, learn to sleep. And I write the whole chapter in Superhuman about sleep is just full of sleep hacks I haven't talked about. Here's one thing that just dramatically matters, blackout curtains. Yeah. And that means no light comes around them. There's a study in Japan of 800 people, 60 or so, uh, 60 years old or more, and they found that the amount of light coming around curtains from just the average street light was enough to increase depression oh. by 63%. Oh my God! So you're still going to sleep. You tell yourself you don't have a problem. You, I look at my phone. I still went to sleep. I slept all night. But you got garbage sleep. It's about the quality of your sleep. I showed you my sleep score. I, mm -hmm. That's that's just highly effective sleep. So here's what to do: dim the lights in your house or turn them off. It should be dim at night because your body's listening to the color of the light. If you have the bright bathroom lights on at two in the morning when you go pee, the rest of your night is trashed yeah, for the low. quality. Right, so I have red lights in the bathrooms. Really, where yeah. do you get the red lights? Just Amazon, red LED bulbs, they're, they're cheap. So you have a little night light that does that. And uh, I wear the True Dark glasses before I go to bed, which have helped me a lot. There's other things you can do though. Raising the, the headboard of your bed by six inches, just raise the height so your bed's at an angle like this. Not a real sharp angle, it's just six inches all kinds of changes in blood flow that are associated with the reduction of aging. So you mean raise the... Just put blocks... So you're at an angle a little yeah, bit. Yeah, put blocks under the head of your bed. So, yeah, yeah so just it, it tips a little bit. And it turns out laying perfectly flat, animals never do that. They always find a hill and put their head up a little bit. Really? Except for us, we have perfectly flat beds. And there's all sorts of blood dynamics, blood pressure changes in the brain that have to do with at night, the brain washes itself out using cerebrospinal fluid. It works better when there's a bit of gravity to help it come out. No way. Yeah, who would have thought? Even right. would three inches work or no? Probably, but six inches is what's studied. You can okay. buy wooden blocks yeah. that just put them okay. out. Interesting. It, All right. It, it's like these are these are just little things, but learning to sleep well. The true dark glasses for me doubled my, my deep sleep. That was that was the final thing. Wearing that before you go to bed. Yeah. For at least a half hour. So just if you're watching TV, you have them on yeah. and you're not true and, dark. and if you're using your phone, just make sure it's super dim and things like that. And everyone talks about it, most people don't do it. And you gotta understand there's a 48 hour lag time. You look at bright lights tonight, the next night's sleep will be affected as well. But we're really sensitive to lights, way more than you think. So you'll see me, there's lots of pictures on social media. I'm wearing kids evening. I'm wearing these kind of red aviator glasses uh, and they're oh actually patented with the, the spectrums that they're blocking. And yeah, I just tell people I'm a professional rock star. Or something. <laughs> I, I, I like don't know, that. that plus my stupid looking shoes and they're like, I'm pretty sure I this like guy's that. weird. I like that. Um, I, think, I think Sisson's trying to buy that company to tell you Oh, that. I yeah. hope he does. Yeah, to like re rebuild it up. I love it Five Fingers. And you, you, you know about the studs on my... That's cool. What is that? What are the studs those, for? Those are uh, Mayan crystals, and they're on the toe chakras. <laughs> okay. And, and so <laughs> they, 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 they make like a DNA helix that comes up oh each leg gosh. to the middle this to raise amazing. testosterone. Shut up. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I just bought them on that Amazon. Be... <laughs> they're there to piss off a good friend who hates my shoes. <laughs> okay, that's funny. <laughs>
Just I like the story about testosterone. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so that's a 24-hour fast. Okay. Learn to sleep better with those tips. All right. So far, we haven't spent anything other than wood blocks on the bed, right? Yes, yeah, six inches. Yep. Okay, and uh, I got to say though, if you were to monitor your sleep, the you Aura Ring. Good, huh? Everyone I know who's got one has improved their sleep. Gosh. I mean, my, right. my mom, <laughs> like everyone who has one is like, I didn't know, but I do this one thing and I actually get a better score. Wow. And it just raises your awareness because we're not good at knowing if we got a good night's sleep or a bad night's sleep. You got to measure it. Yeah. Measure so I, it is liberating, but it's, you know, a couple hundred bucks, right? But that, that's real money, but okay. it's worth it. Okay. Next up, um, to live a lot longer. This is to be healthier. Yep. Generally, yep. Don't eat fried stuff. Ever. Gosh. I don't care if it's fried in, like, in, in the, the in fat the fried of... vegetables. No, not fried vegetables. You, you take a, a Brussels sprout, you deep fry it, it's going to taste good, it's going to be bad for you. And here's why. The amount of inflammation in the body from one meal with fried things in it, I don't care if it's fried fish or fried potato chips, it, it doesn't matter. Um, that increases inflammation for two days. A mm. cigarette is four to eight hours. Mm. Literally, you're better off to smoke a cigarette wow. Then you are to eat a plate of French fries. Okay. And it's that big of a deal. French Look, you, fries you can't have? Well, they're fried. Here, bake the damn French fries. It's not that hard. You bake them and put really good butter on them afterwards. It tastes oh, the same. No, but when you go out, the one's baking it with butter on I know. Them. So it's because restaurants are... When, when plus, you, they fry them in the worst oils that have been reused. You got to just say no. And you look at that, you're like, that's not food. Like, that's I don't do true. that. It's not. And if, if look at the sleep quality when you eat fried stuff. Look at wow, two yeah, days later. True. What does my skin look like? It is that's just true. not worth it. It's true. Uh, sa save that. Uh, save those calories. Something that's really good. Eat ice cream instead of French fries. It's, it's a much day. better trade off. Eat that all day. Seriously, the ice cream is way less harmful. Okay. If I can have ice cream. Done. Okay. Done. <laughs> all right. So don't eat fried stuff ever. Yep. Uh, and in terms of other things that you can do uh, for anti aging, I talked a little bit about the twenty four hour fast. Intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. fasting for more days. It, it, basically, any time that you skip food or reduce your calories is, good. is going to be good for you. So you said four days? There, I've done a four-day fast, and you get really massive metabolic changes after 48 hours of fasting. Really? And the first few days suck, but if you do that brain octane bulletproof uh -huh. coffee trick, it's not that big of a deal. After that, you feel amazing. 48 uh, hours? Yeah, after even, 48 even hours. Even two days? Yeah, yeah. The, the second day is when you just think about food all the time. All the time, you're like, I need to eat. You're right. so used to chewing. It's a habit. Yeah. Right? But then once you, once you ditch the habit, you're like, oh, okay, I just realized I don't need it. And if you were just to sleep better and learn to eat less, you'd do really well. But if you chronically eat less, so you're always hungry, your life sucks. Yeah. The, the thing that's shown to reduce aging the most is actually cutting your calories by a third. Well, all the people who do that, I know maybe a dozen of them, they're all super thin and like, I'm cold all the time, but I got used to it. Your life sucks. Like, yeah, don't do that. No. Uh, who wants to live to 180 under those conditions? No one. No one. But it turns out, not eating for a brief period of time. So here's what happens. Your cells in your body, they go, oh, I guess if I can't go this amount of time without eating, I must be weak. Then I'll, they actually remove that part of the body, the little ancient subcellular mm -hmm. components, and they build new younger ones that, that have the energy to take it. So it's almost like weightlifting for your cells, but you don't have to lift weights. Wow. You just told them, hey, become resilient. Yeah. Right? And so if you do those things, you're going to see magic changes to your health. And let's talk about exercise. Mm -hmm. Okay. We all know that exercise is good, therefore more exercise is better, right? Oh, there's a dose Certain response. Certain types curve. of exercise, yeah. Yeah. Well, it turns out there's two different sets of research that overlap. And here's the minimum necessary exercise to live a long time. Every day, 20 minutes of walking. Mm -hmm. That's it. Just You don't have to breathe hard. You don't have to do anything crazy. Uh, moving more is good. You Walking up and down the stairs. It's not exercise, really. It's just moving. And then once a week, or twice if you want to, more if it makes you happy, for 15 minutes, do something that makes you want to throw up. Right. <laughs> what that means is run a sprint, rest, sprint, rest, high intensity interval training. And there's a new exercise bike uh, called Carol. They did a bunch of research. It, they have a nine minute workout that doesn't make you sweat. And all it is is 10 seconds of super intense, like a tiger's chasing you running, followed by as rapidly as possible calming down. And then doing it again and then calming down. Wow. It turns out it's the rate of change of the heart rate that's causing the benefit Interesting. there. So you do that twice a week. So you lift really heavy things until you can't anymore. Run really fast until you can't and then pause and do it again. You do that twice a week. So it's two, one or two brief bouts of pain. And the rest of the time I went for a walk with my dog or my kids right. or a colleague at work. That will keep you young. Mm. You can do more. 
but it isn't necessary. And each of those will resuscitate mitochondria, they'll cause blood flow changes. So we're not asking you to go out and like hit the gym for an hour a day. Most people like me, I used to do, when I was 300 pounds, an hour and a half a day, six days a week, half weights, half cardio, reliably. I took off Sundays. I was like, I don't care if I'm sick, I don't care if I have final exams, I'm going to the damn gym, I'm not gonna be fat anymore, I will not have another knee surgery. After 18 months of that, I still weighed 300 pounds. Wow. And I said, well, at least I'm strong. I'll go play laser tag. Okay, high risk sport, right? <laughs> I squat down, I twist, blow my ACL. Oh, man. Another knee surgery. And I was like, man, I did it. I swear to God, I have, I have the records. I did every day. I, I was on a low fat diet. It, it was like, that was one of those things I was like, man, this isn't working. Oh. So if exercise is good, more is better. Bad logic. The right dose, the right amount of exercise is good. I just gave you the minimum dose. If you do that, you can walk for 20 minutes a day, you can skip a meal, <laughs> yeah. and you can pay attention to what you do before you go to sleep and make sure that you sleep really well. If you just do those three things, it will change your entire life. You might want to add some stress management on top of that. Meditation is a good thing. Yeah. I, I run a neuroscience institute where we use electrodes on your head so you could do 40 years of meditation in five days. Uh, I've done four months of that. That's why I can write books and run a company and do all the things I do. Um, but here's the deal, breathing exercises. I did Art of Living for many years. It's a form of breathing uh, that came out of India where you put your arms in different positions and it moves things around your lungs. There's box breath breathing, which I talk about on the side. There's ujjayi breathing. Go to a yoga class and you learn pranayama. Learn how to breathe and learn some form of meditation. I don't even care what it is. If you do that for five minutes a day, yeah. 10 minutes a day, again, is more meditation better? It turns out the the fast path of Buddhism, keep in mind, I found, I discovered the idea for Bulletproof Coffee in Tibet learning meditation from wow. the masters. Wow. Uh, so like I, I'm into this stuff, but the fast path of Buddhism, they warn you in the ancient tests and modern psychologists, well, you could get fully enlightened in one lifetime, but a lot of people go nuts. Yeah, so it's true. There are people who are saying meditation is dangerous. Okay, I would say it's way, the, the risk reward is very strong yeah. on, on that. But here's the deal. Just because some meditation is good, you're not a bad person if you didn't meditate for an hour and you don't need to meditate for eight hours to be a good person. And you might want to go do a Vipassana if that's if you feel called to it, but it it's not about doing a lot. It's just like exercise. If you make it a mountain, you won't do it. Nice. So you slept better than you did. You meditated for at least five minutes, maybe with some breathing exercises in there. Mm -hmm. You skipped a meal. Yeah, it's, it. <laughs> it's, it's not that hard. And if you do those things, I write in the beginning of the book about the four killers, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and Alzheimer's. If you just did those four things to avoid the four things I mentioned, to avoid those four things, your risk of them goes down so much that you're no longer average. Yeah. Those aren't going to be the four killers for you. You probably will have a 20% chance of those taking you out and an 80% chance of something else. Wow. And if you do the other seven pillars of aging, at least mostly right, the odds of something taking you out, it's going to be a truck hitting you when you're 120. <laughs> right, 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 right. Or maybe or you're going on a rocket ship to space yeah. to try something. Or maybe yeah. you'll, you'll die in bed, but during exercise in bed. And that's not a bad situation yeah, either, right? Exactly. And this is what aging used to be, Lewis. And this is what it is lacking. Most people who are hearing this go, why would I want to be 180? There's diapers and tubes and you don't remember your name and you're entirely dependent on other people and you feel your brain going away. And man, this is not what aging was ever like throughout all of history. Most of the time, People were, yeah, yeah, your back hurt a little bit, but you know, you aged, but you were you were venerated as you know the village elder, as having wisdom and, and respect. And as you did this, eventually you got sick and you died. And it might take you a week. It, it might take you yeah. a day or two where you just go to bed and you wake up dead, right? This is how it normally works. This long protracted period of, of convalescence and being an invalid, it's unnatural, it's yeah. not necessary, it's not what's happening for people who do even a few of the things here. So take that picture, you get rid of it, and you say, when I'm 100 years old, I'm gonna be healthy, playing healthy. with my grandkids, I'm gonna be giving back to my community, and I'm gonna have 100 years of experience to share. Wow. And do you know how much 100 years is? Okay. Think about 1919. We were fighting World War I on horseback. Wow. They still use cavalry in World War I. Okay. And when people say, Dave, how, do, how dare you think you're going to live another 134 years? <laughs> I know the people doing the research. We have PubMed. We have the internet. We can find knowledge effortlessly. Heck, we can listen to podcasts. You couldn't do that a long time ago. You could only listen to a radio show controlled by three big media companies, yeah. right? 
everything is easier and faster and more fun and more exciting. And the anti-aging field is, is based on decades of modern research and based on centuries of research in monasteries, in traditional Chinese medicine, in Ayurveda. Yeah. Every major lineage of medicine has anti-aging at its core. Yeah. The modern scientists that, that we revere, like Francis Bacon, all of them were working on something called natural philosophy, also known as alchemy. Alchemy was the art of immortality, not mm -hmm. turning lead into gold. Wow. So the, the advances of modern science were all based on people trying to live forever. Wow. This is in our, it's in our core DNA to do this. The thing is, now we can actually do it. And it's the coolest time ever to be alive is you have to understand old age means I look good, I feel good, mm -hmm. I'm independent, and I'm wise because I've learned from my mistakes, my mistakes yeah. and I'm still having good sex. That's great. And Oh, and you're eating bacon. Like, life like is good. It. I like it, man. <laughs> uh, you know, when they say you look better with age, that should be a compliment of you yeah. doing the right things. Absolutely. So I hope to constantly look better the older I get. Um, I love it, man. Superhuman. It's out right now, the bulletproof plan to age backward and maybe even live forever. Make sure you guys check it out. Tons of research in here. It's very thick. Lots of great stuff. But you can also just go to the end of the chapters, read the bullets. Yep. And uh, here's the thing you need to do right now to improve. You don't have to dive into all the research. But check it out, guys. And uh, where can they get it right now? You That's can, the best place. You can pick it up anywhere that you like to buy books online. It's at Barnes & Noble. It's at Amazon. And if you send a copy of your receipt to me at DaveAsprey.com, I have a series of eight interviews that I've done with leaders in the anti-aging field that are not a part of my podcast. Wow. They're just a kind of a confidential limited series. I'm just giving those to people just to say thanks for buying the book. Love it, man. And, and I got to say, look, if people have read your book and they haven't left you a review, yeah. just go do it. People, authors oftentimes don't don't express how important that is. It's so important. It, and like, I read my reviews. You read yours on Absolutely, Amazon? Absolutely, man. Because right? you want to know, how did I do? Yeah. It, it's the most direct way. And if you tell people that it was a book worth reading. So if you haven't reviewed your know, Mask of Masculinity or any of Lewis's other books, go review yeah. them. If you like Superhuman, Leave go review. review that too. Leave a review. Uh, let them know one part of the book that helped you the most and how it's improved your life. It's, it's super helpful. Check it out. Uh, you're on social media. You're on Dave.Asprey on Instagram, DaveAsprey.com, Bulletproof.com for all the cool Bulletproof stuff that I yeah. make. Get the Bulletproof yeah. coffee for the fasting. It'll, it'll, it'll make you less hungry. Oh, yeah. I promise. I haven't eaten since, uh, what, it's been like 20, it's been 19 hours now. But you did Bulletproof this morning? I did or Bulletproof no? this did, okay. morning. Yeah. I've had it for the last like two and a half hours. I've been sipping on it. Still got a little nice. bit left. And I don't feel hungry. So I'm going to go working. another five or six hours. <laughs> have my 24 hour fast while I'm talking to you and uh, try some of these other things. So, Dave, thanks for constantly thanks, being Lewis. a guinea pig, uh, guinea pig for all of us. Thanks for constantly doing the scary things a lot of us don't want to do <laughs> to show us what's possible. And uh, I acknowledge you, man. I appreciate you very much. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. I appreciate your work, Lewis. You're changing the world in a good way. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it, man.